Welcome back to Game Gentlemen, where we scour the news each and every week to bring you the latest in the world of gaming. We've been on holidays for a few weeks and have missed some pretty big stories, including E3's cancellation. PS5 announced their initial specs, which led to a host of comparisons between it and the Series X, and Xbox showed off even more of their new console, including a leaked release date, which was quickly retracted by the company. Lastly, gaming companies, along with the rest of us, have reacted to our new reality in responding to the COVID-19 pandemic. With all of that out of the way, here are the stories you should know from March 23rd to March 29th, 2020. Number 10. Epic Games have announced the publishing arm, creatively named Epic Games Publishing. In the statement, Epic announced they would be working on publishing the next projects from Limbo developers Playdead, Control and Alan Wake developers Remedy, and Last Guardian developers Gen Design. Gen Design, Remedy, and Playdead are amongst the most innovative and talented studios in the industry, with strong visions for their next games, said Hector Sanchez, head of Epic Games Publishing. Epic Games have pitched their approach as developer first, supporting studios financially without taking away creative control. Developers will retain their IP and profits will be split 50-50. Remedy creative director Sam Lake has revealed that the studio was signed on for two games with the new publisher, and both titles will be multi-platform across next-gen consoles and PC. Number 9. Nintendo of America has donated 9,595 particulate face masks to first responders near the company's headquarters in Washington amongst global shortages. The company purchased the masks a while back as a part of an emergency preparedness planning and they had been put into storage. The city of North Bend, Washington thanked the company in a post on their site, closing with the statement, This crisis is unprecedented. The safety and security of community members is paramount in our daily mission. These communities served by the city of North Bend and Eastside Fire and Rescue deeply appreciate the generous donation from Nintendo. Number 8. Riot Games and its co-founders Brandon Beck and Mark Merrill are donating a total of $1.5 million to help organisations providing relief for those affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Of the $1.5 million, $400,000 will go to the Los Angeles Food Bank and $200,000 to the Mayor's Fund for Los Angeles to help ease living and medical costs for those in need. Riot Games has taken several steps in light of the pandemic, moving its North American Championship Series online, delaying the Invitational, and cancelling hands-on events with its new title Valorant. Number 7. Sonic the Hedgehog is speeding to digital platforms including the PlayStation Store on the 31st of March, well ahead of its scheduled Blu-ray and DVD release of the 19th of May. Of course, Sonic isn't alone in this, with recent releases such as Emma, The Invisible Man, Birds of Prey, and Onward all receiving early digital releases. Love it or hate it, Sonic the Hedgehog was a huge commercial success, bringing in $306 million worldwide, pushing it to the top 5 highest grossing video game films of all time. Number 6. YouTuber and game modder Lance McDonald has given us further insight into the detailed and creepy behaviour of the terrifying ghostly figure Lisa, who stalks you throughout the playable teaser PT. In the nearly 10 minute video, McDonald showcases Lisa's off-camera behaviours after key events in the teaser, such as the window break in the front hall, and discovering the flashlight in the bathroom. We won't spoil the details here, but we encourage you to check out the video. It amazes us that players are still discovering things in this short demo nearly 6 years after its release, even if they are with mods. Number 5 Wired Productions have delayed the release of their upcoming title Those Who Remain by a month from May to June, and physical deluxe editions of Deliver Us the Moon to July, citing setbacks related to COVID-19. Due to several offices, including our main HQ, and those of our developers and partners closing or moving to remote working, we've had to change the release date of some versions of Deliver Us the Moon and Those Who Remain. In these uncertain times, we do not want to add any additional workload or stress to those that are affected. Games Radar has noted that the digital versions of Deliver Us the Moon will still release as planned on April 24th. Additionally, UK-based Steamforge Games has also cited production problems caused by COVID-19 and the UK lockdown in its announcement on the delay in the Horizon Zero Dawn board game. Kotaku's Jason Schreier alluded in a tweet that this will be the first of many delays caused due to the effects of this pandemic. Number 4. 
With major specs being released for both consoles in the past few weeks, comparison articles and videos were inevitable, and on paper it seems like the Xbox Series X is definitively more powerful than the PS5. However, on Kotaku's split-screen podcast, journalist Jason Trier noted that according to various developers who had spoken with him, the two consoles are both incredibly impressive in their own right. In the podcast, Schreier says, Everybody's now seeing this spec sheet and they see PS5 10.2 teraflops and Xbox Series X 12 teraflops and it's like, oh my god, the Xbox is more powerful than the PlayStation. But meanwhile, the people I've been talking to over the past few months and the past couple of years who are actually working on the PlayStation have pretty much unanimously said, this thing is a beast. This thing is one of the coolest pieces of hardware that we've ever seen, we've ever used before. There are so many things here that are revolutionary, but so many behind the scenes tools and features, APIs and all sorts of other stuff that is way beyond my scope of comprehension. Schreier notes that the current narrative is most likely due to the way Sony has handled its information rollout for the upcoming console. The general consensus is that these things are both extremely powerful and both very similar in a lot of ways and both do different things in really cool ways, he said. These are both extremely impressive pieces of technology, but because of the way Sony has actually presented this thing and marketed this thing, now the narrative is... Xbox is way more powerful than the PlayStation, and I think that is such a maybe fatal flaw on Sony's part for this console generation. Maybe it'll all be forgotten if the PS5 comes in cheaper, or it has a killer launch lineup, and maybe none of this will matter in November, or maybe these consoles won't even be available to come out in November. With around 8 months until the speculated release of the next generation of consoles, and a void in the gaming news cycle left behind by E3, We'll have to wait and see how Sony continues to handle its messaging. Number 3 Plague Inc. developer and Demo Creations has pledged $250,000 to fight COVID-19. Split between the Coalition of Endemic Preparedness Innovations and the World Health Organization's COVID-19 Solidarity Response Fund. The title has had a surge in popularity since the start of the COVID-19 outbreak, with China banning the game and Endemic having to put in a patch to stop players naming their play coronavirus. Additionally, the dev has noted that one of the most common requests they are receiving is for a mode where a player takes action to stop an outbreak, and as a result they are speeding up work on such a mode where the player will implement healthcare systems, social distancing, quarantine, and more. This mode is being developed with the help of the World Health Organization and the Global Outbreak Alert and Response Network. Number 2 Nintendo's Direct Mini announced a heap of new games and updates for the Switch. Among the announcements were the Borderlands and Bioshock collections, Smash Ultimate's Next Fighter DLC, Animal Crossing's Bunny Day Update, Bravely Default 2, Panzer Dragoon Remake, Pokemon Sword and Shield's first expansion, Isle of Armor, Burnout Paradise Remastered, Saints Row 4 Remastered, and many more. You can watch the Direct on Nintendo's YouTube channel by clicking the link above. Number 1 Lastly, we're aware that people all around the world are in varying degrees of isolation, quarantine, or just practicing good social distancing. So we've rounded up a list of the games and demos that you can enjoy for free over the coming weekend and beyond. PC players can look forward to World War Z, Figment, and Tormentor X Punisher this week on the Epic Game Store, with Gone Home and Hob free to claim on the 2nd of April. Steam users can enjoy City Skylines, Kerbal Space Program, and Insurgency Sandstorm for free this weekend, and Ubisoft are allowing users to play Ghost Recon Breakpoint for free across PS4, Xbox One, and PC until March 30th. Predator Hunting Grounds will launch a free trial this weekend, which sits alongside Final Fantasy VII Remake and Resident Evil 3 one-shot demo. Capcom will also be opening the beta for Resident Evil Project Resistance this weekend, prior to its April 3 release. April PS Plus games have been announced, with Uncharted 4 and Dirt 2.0 available from the 7th of April. Xbox gamers will be able to play Tekken 7 and Risk of Rain 2 alongside Ghost Recon Breakpoint with their free play days. While games with gold for April were yet to be announced at the time of recording, users can still get their hands on March titles such as Batman The Enemy Within and Shantae Half Genie Hero for Xbox One and Castlevania Lords of Shadow and Sonic Generations for Xbox 360. And that's all the news for this week. We hope that wherever you are, you are staying safe and healthy. If you are in quarantine or lockdown, use this time to call a loved one, learn a new skill, or work through that backlog of games. We'll be posting a number of videos across the coming weeks, so please give us a like, leave a comment, and subscribe.
this day up to date.